Uh, listen, it's unfortunate uh, that this government has chosen to uh, extend another four weeks uh, the uh, amount of time which they get to dodge difficult questions on uh, their lack of uh, judgment and their uh, uh, the, the scandal that is uh, has centered around their prime minister's office. Uh, I, uh, I understand that a government that has run out of ideas halfway through its mandate is going to need to set the reset button, but there's no need that they couldn't have actually been working on the throne speech throughout the summer and presenting it uh, today instead of delaying another four weeks the amount of time that uh, we parties of the opposition are going to be able to challenge uh, this government to, uh, to be held to account. Uh, that's why uh, today uh, in Ottawa, the Liberals held a roundtable on wireless uh, uh, communications with experts talking about where we need to go. Uh, tomorrow, uh, we're going to have more roundtables and more discussions about what this country needs to be doing and the kinds of solutions that Canadians are hungry for. Liberals are getting back to Ottawa, back to work, uh, even if this government is. <laughs> I am extraordinarily proud of my mother. Amazing work she's done. Did he take my bag? It's my dog. The bag? My dog. The work that she's done across the country in uh, sharing her story and destigmatizing mental health. And I remain uh, incredibly proud of her and I love her very much. Uh, and that's all I'm going to have to say about that. Trudeau, you've been here many times before. What's your favorite thing about Ryerson? Uh, the energy level. Uh, we have students here who are really looking at uh, changing the world, whether it's through in engagements like the DMC or uh, journalism or many of the di different programs they have that are very much anchored in uh, the real world and how to empower young people not to be just leaders of tomorrow, but leaders of today. And I'm super, super pleased to be back at Ryerson. Quick, quick question. It's Canada's Democracy Week starting today. Give us how, your impression on democracy. Uh, democracy is all about citizens understanding that citizenship is more than just uh, voting, paying your taxes, and obeying the law. Citizenship is about being engaged in how we shape our community, our country, every day uh, with our community activism, but also with being involved in the choices we make uh, as important as who represents us uh, in the House of Commons. And that's why being here with Chrystia Freeland is going to make an extraordinary MP for Toronto Centre and add to the level of discourse we have in the House of Commons about how we respond to the great challenges Canada and the world is facing uh, is exactly something we should be celebrating uh, in democracy. Uh, another important element of democracy is the open nominations that Christian was a part of where local liberals got to decide who would be their voice in Ottawa and that motion and that, that drive for openness, accountability, transparency that I pushed at the Liberal Party uh, is something I'm continuing to be able to celebrate uh, around democracy. I, I, I've said from the beginning uh, the Quebecers are better than Madame Marois is putting forward. She's uh, playing the crassest kind of uh, divisive politics to try and uh, re-energize a debate uh, around the fading option of sovereignty and distract from her uh, less than stellar, to put it very kindly, uh, economic record. Uh, but Quebecers are not intolerant people. We are uh, open and generous like all Canadians and people are realizing that uh, you know, justice and equality uh, requires better uh, than Madame Marois' plan for uh, divisive discrimination. The Paul Martin government before it was brought down made commitments to transit at the municipal level. What will you do for our cities? I think one of the things that we need to highlight is the fact that uh, Canada is one of the only OECD is the only OECD country without a national transit strategy. Now we need to make sure that we understand that transit is more than just a city issue. It's an issue of our economy and the amount of time wasted in commutes, the amount of inefficiencies. 
uh, because we don't have a transit that is up to the needs of the 21st century is something that we have to turn around. And yes, the federal government needs to continue to be involved in uh, making sure that our cities are doing as, as best as they can. I'm proud of Paul Barton's initiative around the gas tax, uh, but we need to once again have a federal government that is willing to stand up and show leadership and partnership uh, with different levels of government, something that this current government simply has not done. And last question. Uh, I was wondering if I get your opinion on uh, Kendrick Lamar's verse. On what? Kendrick Lamar's verse. I have no idea what you're talking about, so I think that's your question. Uh, Christia and I uh, met a year ago, uh, a little more than a year ago, around the launch of her book, Plutocrats, uh, which uh, impressed me and informed very much uh, my thinking around what we need to do to strengthen the middle class in this country. And I'm actually very, very proud that uh, as of a year ago, uh, when I launched my campaign, nobody was talking about the middle class in Canada. People were talking about, uh, you know, still anchored in the trickle-down theories. They were talking about big corporations as being job creations. There wasn't a recognition of the very real challenges faced by middle-class Canadians, that is, the vast majority of Canadians. And the fact that uh, we've been able to bring that conversation forward, and the fact that we now have uh, someone incredible in Christian Freeland who's going to stand forward uh, and uh, continue to shape this discussion in a way that will bring about the kinds of changes we need in politics is something very exciting to me. Thank you very much, everyone. One great last